Toxic gossip train The locomotive's fuel with hateful accusations Toxic gossip train Steamroll over someone's reputation Toxic gossip train Up on board but close your eyes Otherwise you realize that the train is made of lies And the person you despise Maybe didn't deserve to die But hey I can sing too, Colleen. That doesn't mean I should do it for every situation. This is gonna be a short one today. I wasn't gonna talk about this because A, it's a developing situation, and B, I don't usually cover things like YouTube drama on here. I'm not a drama channel or even really a commentary channel. I just like making my silly little video essays about stuff that I like or don't like. But Jesus Christ, this is the worst response video to anything that I've ever seen. Even if she was in the right, which she's not, this video would still make me think she was guilty. This is the most blatant, aggravating pity party that I have ever seen. When she pulled out that ukulele, I damn near had a stroke. Even though my team has strongly advised me to not say what I want to say. Oh, your team strongly advised you not to say what you want to say? Your team, that's entire job is to ensure your image and keep you out of legal and financial trouble? That team? I recently realized that they never said that I couldn't sing. Singing! That'll fix it. I used to message my fans, uh, but not in a creepy way, like a lot of you are trying to suggest. It was more of a loser kind of way. Uh, when you go to like a family gathering, you know, and there's a weird aunt there who keeps coming up to you and going like, hey girl, what's the tea? And you're like, Ugh. So you agree. You made everyone uncomfortable. Messaging your fans is one thing, but getting into a group chat with underage fans called Colleen's Weenies? That's an entirely different thing. Regardless of how famous you are, whether you're a mainstream celebrity or a streamer or a YouTuber or a writer, there should always be some kind of boundary there. You can be kind to people, respond to their DMs, be nice to them, without ingratiating yourself into their lives. It's about the power imbalance. It's still creepy even if it wasn't for sexual reasons which i don't honestly believe that it was that doesn't make it not incredibly creepy she seems to think that just because she's not jimmy savile that we're all overreacting because you could only be doing something bad if you've committed a crime the power imbalance still exists whether or not you're using that power imbalance to commit crimes does not negate the fact that the behavior is inappropriate i've been sharing my life online for over 15 years because of that i feel like i'm talking to my friends but in the beginning of my career i didn't really understand that maybe there should be some boundaries there at the beginning of your career Girl, the Adam stuff was still going on up to 2020. You just said you've been doing this for 15 years. Where do you class the beginning of your career as? Last week? Just because you stopped doing it after Adam came out the first time doesn't mean that all the other times you did it before that don't, like, count. The toxic gossip train The locomotive's fueled with hateful accusations The toxic gossip train Steamroll over someone's reputation Here's my major problem with this video. Aside from the fact that it's making light of a bunch of her ex-fans' real feelings that they have been brave enough to express, I do agree with the chorus of this stupid little song. I do think that the internet has a tendency to pile on, to create a toxic gossip train and then run people over with it. I've made multiple videos about my feelings on how frustrating and dangerous it is to just believe something and then attack somebody about it. My John Green video, my Kit Connor video, my Sorbet video. It's something I've covered a lot on this channel because I feel very passionate about it. The internet's immediate response to just dogpile somebody without all the facts is dangerous and it has and will continue to ruin people's lives. The toxic gossip train ruined Adam's life three years ago and you didn't care then. What? It only matters when it's affecting you, Colleen? Shocker. I feel like I can already hear the comments on this video. She's gaslighting, manipulating, oh, she's a narcissist and a rat. I would never make a mistake like that. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that all of you are perfect, so please criticize. Well, you're not beating the narcissist allegations by responding to serious accusations with a self-centered song where you don't bring any receipts and cry about how hard this has all been for you. If you didn't want people to call you a narcissist, the first thing on your list should have been put down the ukulele. I agree with the sentiment of those who have never sinned throw the first stone to a certain extent, but my god, that's not what this is about. 
I don't agree with anybody sending death threats to her or calling her names or whatever else the horrible internet dog pile has been doing, but just because a minority are taking it too far does not mean the original accusations suddenly hold no water. I know you wanted me to say that I was 100% in the wrong. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna take that route of admitting to lies and rumors that you made up for clout. Lies and rumors that you made up for clout. Somebody explain to me how leaking DMs that show Colleen being inappropriate with minors is going to gain people clout. Explain to me why anybody would want clout based exclusively around that. Explain it to me like I'm five. I also wanted to take a minute to talk about that girl Miranda Sings. You know the one. Yeah, her. She's PG-13. It says that on my website and it's always been that way. I didn't realize it was my responsibility to decide what was appropriate for every kid to see. I've always relied on parents to decide if they're comfortable with their families watching my YouTube videos or coming to my live shows. This is another thing that bothers me. Okay, fine, you weren't marketing Miranda to kids under 13, supposedly, but you knew that's who was watching it. You knew it was mainly children and young teenagers coming to your live shows. You knew you were pushing the boundaries of what was appropriate by getting into group chats with them or doing inappropriate things with excited fans on stage who maybe didn't understand at the time why it made them so uncomfortable, but are coming out now to express their discomfort. You don't get to decide that just because you weren't trying to make people feel bad, it makes it okay. If you upset somebody, no matter what your intentions were, you apologize. If you crossed a boundary, you apologize and you never do it again. I'm not a groomer. I'm just a loser who didn't understand I shouldn't respond to fans. And I'm not a predator, even though a lot of you think so, because five years ago I made a fart joke. Referring to the situation as a fart joke is so upsetting, I'm actually going to throw hands. Pauline traumatized. Hi, okay, my name is Becky. I'm the girl in this video. So I was a fan of Colleen and all the Ballinger family for a very, very long time, and I think in this video I was about 16. If you've never been to a Miranda show, Colleen frequently has segments where she calls people up on stage. One of those segments was the porn bit, which I'm not really going to be explaining in this video, but that's why I was kind of trying to dress skimpy so that I would be called up on stage and basically get degraded by Miranda. But I did not get called up for that. I got called up for the yoga challenge. Now, as soon as I stood up from the audience, I saw Colleen's eyes widen because she realized I was not wearing pants. But for some reason, that didn't stop her from continuing. In fact, no adult at any point stepped in in that situation. So we get to the point in the yoga challenge where I am laying down and Colleen is spreading my legs basically as far as she can. She spreads them so far that you can see the spandex I was wearing under my romper, which thank God I was wearing. There is a whole video of this. But that screenshot is the most important because that is the moment I will never forget where I was laying under Colleen and she was smirking down at me while thousands of people were laughing and I was terrified that my body wasn't covered enough up enough by the spandex or the romper. I basically felt naked, so it felt incredibly sexually violating. I was younger and my body was still developing and I was still becoming comfortable with myself, so for her to use my body as entertainment on stage really set um, my confidence back quite a lot. There's a couple comments on Xander's video being like, oh, she signed up for that, why is this such a big deal, blah blah blah. Colleen exploited my minor body for entertainment and money and did not protect my safety at this show. As an outsider looking into this situation, it may seem like this wasn't a big deal, but this was really pretty scary for my teenage self, and especially someone who loved and looked up to Colleen. And I could never say anything because everybody loved her. How dare you make light of how uncomfortable that girl felt? What is wrong with you? Even though I know this video won't change anyone's mind about me, I still felt it was important to come on here and defend myself a little and take accountability. What about this is taking accountability? You've spent this entire video complaining that all the accusations are either overblown or false, and you've actively mocked them as a toxic gossip train to imply that none of it is true. Sometimes people make a mistake and it doesn't make them a horrible person, whoa. Sometimes people make mistakes simply because they made a mistake. Mistake doesn't make them a terrible human. Yes, people do make mistakes, but the thing that makes it a mistake is that you don't repeat it. Once you start repeating it, it becomes a pattern. If this was about making mistakes, you should have resolved it when Adam came forward three years ago and he didn't even leak your DMs. If you'd apologized correctly the first time, all this other stuff might not have come out. Maybe it still would, but maybe people would have been more willing to accept an apology or brush over it if you'd handled it correctly the first time. This is a situation of your own making and you don't get to just cry, we all make mistakes and whoever sinned throw the first stone when you were the person with all the power in this situation. God, this kind of thing makes me so angry. It made me angry when Shane Dawson did it, it made me angry when James Charles did it, and it makes me angry when Colleen Ballinger does it. Just because she's a woman doesn't make it any less of a problem. The toxic gossip train online is a huge 
issue and one that isn't going to be resolved anytime soon. But this isn't that. This is a narcissist realizing they've lost their foothold and are trying a Hail Mary to get it back. The worst part is she probably genuinely believes her own bullshit. She probably genuinely believes that she's innocent in all this, that people are coming at her for no reason because that's what narcissists do. They have to. This is insane. This is one of the worst videos ever posted to youtube.com. On the one hand, I'm furious because it's insulting to Adam and all the other people who have come forward about her inappropriate behavior. And on the other hand, I'm relieved because all it does is prove them all right. She doesn't care about them. She doesn't care about right and wrong. She doesn't care about the people that she may have hurt, however unintentionally. The only thing she cares about is herself. I think the thing that really aggravates me about the mistakes bit at the end, her little outro, is that Adam, in every video that he makes, freely admits that he was a part of the problem. Every single person he brings up who he and Colleen used to bully, he apologizes for and he owns his part in that. Every single time. Even though at the time he was a teenager who's being manipulated by somebody in their 30s to treat people that way, somebody who he idolized and was getting rewarded for treating people that way, and most teenagers would behave that way if somebody they idolized was rewarding them every time that they joined in on the bullying, he still owns that. He still feels guilty for that. He still takes part in that. That's what a mistake is. That's what owning up to a mistake looks like. That's what taking accountability looks like. It's not whatever this is. I haven't done that for years, you see, because I changed my behavior and I took accountability. But that's not very interesting, is it? You can have a problem with Adam being a drama channel. That's, that's one thing, but that's an entirely different thing. You can have an issue with somebody and still believe them when they come forward with evidence and receipts and accusations. He sat there for an hour scrolling through Instagram DMs as like to prove that they existed, that they happened. It was a video. It was alive. He, he showed us what those DMs were. You don't get to be like, lies and clout. No, that's not how any of this works. Oh my God. I don't know what's going on with the like mid 2000s YouTube stars, but far out, man. I know that every career where you're in a position of power has a tendency to attract people who are gonna take advantage of that position of power. But my God, that whole crew of people is just like irreparably broken. It should not be that difficult to just behave like a normal person on the internet. You can make mistakes, you might fuck up, but then you, you need to deal with it at the time. Apologize at the time, take accountability at the time. Your original apology wasn't any good, as has been proven by all of the DMs that have since come out. Like I'm sure I've fucked up interactions with people, but I haven't made a continuous pattern of it. I was in a giant discord for the hundred when I was in that fandom. Um, and there were people of all ages in all the, all the way down to like 12, 13, right? And we had a bunch of channels in the discord and there was hundreds of people, like 180, 200 people in, in, in there. And we had a couple of discord channels that were like NSFW discord channels, 18 plus, and you had to click the yes, I'm over 18 to get in there. But that's like the only barrier that has. So if you click over 18, discord will just let you in. And there was a girl in that group chat who was 13 and he used to go into the NSFW channels and have inappropriate conversations with full grown adults. Um, and it used to make me so uncomfortable. And I tried to bring it up once and be like, hey, maybe don't be asking the teenage girl about her sex life. And people used, people called me a prude. People told me that I was taking it too seriously, that this was all in good fun. So I left that discord. I was like, oh, there's, there's inappropriate. And I was like 20, 19, 20 when that happened. Like, it's very easy to see inappropriate behavior happening and A, bring it up so that the person knows they're in the wrong and B, if that person doesn't acknowledge they're in the wrong, leave. It's very easy to acknowledge when a behavior makes somebody uncomfortable and do something about it. Whether that something is to put your foot down or leave. I tried to say something, it didn't work and there were too many of them for me, so I left. I did bring it up with the girl and I told her that I thought it was inappropriate, but she was so excited to be a part of the big girl club, right? Like when you're 13, I remember being the same, when you're, when you're 13, 14, 15, and you're hanging out with people who are much older than you, and they're like bringing you into their conversations that are like sexual or inappropriate in nature, you're not thinking, well, this is inappropriate. You're thinking, oh, they think I'm cool. Oh, they, I'm part of the club. I'm an adult, I'm grown up. Because that's all teenagers wanna be. Oh God, it's so, it's so frustrating. It's so aggravating that like in the age of the internet, like I don't agree with the right wing talking points that like, you know, children should just be sheltered from everything forever. And like, you should never see it, like know what a gay person is until you're over 18, all that bullshit. But like, you should still have some level of safeguarding. There isn't like a, it's not a black and white issue of like, we either safeguard children from everything and put them in a box until they're 18 so that they never know how the world works. Or we 
expose them to everything without any filters. Obviously the real answer is somewhere in the middle. But this is just, oh god, it's so frustrating. <sighs> Believe, Adam, believe all of the articles that are coming out. The, like, HuffPost article where real journalists asked multiple people for comment, including her ex-husband, that she refused to comment on, by the way. She refused to comment on, like, a legitimate journalist calling her for comment, but she she made this video. So that should tell you about where her, where her priorities lie. Toxic gossip train Locomotives fuel with hateful accusations Toxic gossip train Steamroll over Adam's reputation Toxic gossip train Hop on board but close your eyes Otherwise you realize That the train is made of lies And the person you despise Maybe didn't deserve to die But hey At least you're having fun Annyeong